Hi and welcome back to the lab. Today here on the bench we have a vintage Yaeso FT736 which uh, is an old mode uh, VHF UHF uh, radio. And uh, yeah, it is uh, really uh, from the late 80s, I believe. And uh, the radio is suffering from the well known, I guess, from the well known SMPS uh, problem because uh, it uh, does not turn on, so nothing happens at all. So I believe it is really. Um, the power supply which uh, is uh, making the known problems and that is uh, what uh, I wanted to show you because um, yeah, many of you still uh, like this uh, radio uh, because uh, it also has the uh, possibility to put another module in the uh, SHF module so uh, you know still it is uh, very much uh, laughed on uh, outside in the field and therefore yes uh, let us look uh, inside and see if it is really only the SMPS what uh, is making trouble. Why are you telling that? Let's talk uh, a moment about um, vintage radios. So vintage radio is uh, not a repair it is uh, always a restoration and that is not what uh, we are offering and that is simple because um, we do have problems to get uh, parts which uh, makes it uh, nearly impossible to repair radios like this I mean that is then uh, almost 40 years or maybe if it is from the late uh, late 80s uh, 30 years whatever but uh, anyways uh, so you do not get uh, parts for those radios and uh, then you have repaired one side of the radio and then you will definitely have another problem on another part of the radio. So this radios, this old radios are always uh, developing as a kind of rabbit hole and uh, you know that uh, is nothing what uh, you really can do um, when you're repairing radios like uh, this so that is really more if you really love those radios and you can take your time to uh, restore such radios over weeks and weeks and uh, you can observe the market if you get somewhere uh, donor boards or such to really finally repair them so that is uh, just that you understand that uh, you cannot always repair everything even it is uh, that old. Okay, but anyways, let's now have a look into it and let's see what we can do. Okay, and here we have our uh, 736 and uh, it is already connected to mains and now when uh, I try to switch it on, it uh, you see nothing happens. So, um, that shows that uh, obviously we uh, do not have uh, our power supply working and uh, interesting to see is um, let's have a, a look onto my uh, power analyzer okay so uh, just uh, see uh, what or if these figures here are uh, changing uh, when I'm switching on and uh, now I'm uh, pressing the power button and what you have seen is that uh, suddenly uh, we uh, see that uh, 20 watt uh, were consumed by the radio which uh, is obviously showing and now still we have 5 watt uh, left and uh, you see here our power factor so something uh, is happening here in uh, the radio so the radio tries to uh, catch up uh, but uh, it uh, cannot really bring up uh, the needed uh, voltage so the DC voltage to really supply the radio and uh, that is another um, indication for the fact that uh, the SMPS 
is not working here and therefore therefore let's uh, crack open the radio and let's see um, if uh, my suspicion is right uh, that something is wrong with our SMPS. Okay and here uh, from the bottom side uh, we have here our power supply and uh, very interesting to see is that uh, the radio is uh, fully equipped so we have the 50 megahertz uh, module and uh, we have the uh, SFH uh, FHF module the 1.2 gigahertz module so that means uh, that uh, the radio is really fully equipped and uh, that uh, is the reason why uh, still many of you uh, like um, this radio um, uh, what we uh, could do is uh, we can check if uh, the radio will start up if we supply our voltage um, here through let me see if I can show it to you uh, through our 13.8 uh, 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 voltage uh, socket uh, because uh, the radio can also be operated um, with an external power supply, right? So therefore, of course, um, it is not uh, uh, necessary to use the internal SMPS. You can also use an external one. But I mean, okay, so that is not really <clears throat> that that makes not really sense if you uh, have the internal power supply and uh, you have your mains uh, at home where this radio most uh, of the time will be operated so but it is uh, good uh, to be able to test if we feed um, our voltage here into the into the socket okay so now um, I have connected uh, my uh, power supply and uh, you see here the voltage and uh, that is now directly connected into the socket for uh, battery operations okay and uh, now let me switch the radio on yeah and uh, what we already see it is uh, turning on and uh, it looks like uh, normal so that is then uh, the proof that uh, our power supply so the SMPS power supply is the problem and therefore next step we uh, can directly take uh, the power supply out and uh, yeah let's see um, if that is the known problem and here we have our power supply already taken apart and uh, what we already can see if uh, we um, have a look to the PCB that uh, it is quite uh, dark here so that uh, shows that uh, we have a heavy heat here inside uh, our power supply which is of course not good here for our capacitors which here on uh, the PCB and without uh, looking into our schematic um, we can identify some of the co components uh, right away so uh, here um, this is uh, of course our input uh, circuit so that is the uh, EMI uh, filter so we have here our X uh, capacitors and uh, our Y uh, capacitors which are yeah, a kind uh, of uh, very safe uh, capacitors X and Y because they are connected uh, to the line voltage then we have here our bridge rectifier here is our inrush uh, protection and then this bows here are our uh, filter caps for the rectified uh, DC and uh, of course here is our transformer and uh, somewhere here behind the transformer we have our transistor so according to our power, uh, to our schematic it uh, is a flyback converter as um, we have uh, described it in video 211 and yeah, here we have really a bunch of uh, capacitors which are very often 
the root um, cause for problems so they are getting old they are drying out and uh, then um, we have uh, such problems we have seen and when I then uh, flip over the board here and I don't know if uh, we really can uh, see it uh, let me try if uh, I can uh, get it in somehow uh, because yeah maybe here we can uh, already see it let's see how far I can go finally and uh, yeah you can uh, see it here that uh, we have uh, cracks here uh, you can uh, see it here so um, and there are some of uh, those cracks so um, the temperature is uh, a problem uh, the board is getting uh, so hot that uh, maybe uh, some times uh, it reaches um, a very high uh, temperature which uh, already have an impact on uh, the solder joints and uh, additional to that simply do uh, our uh, transformer which uh, is working I don't know between uh, 60 and 100 kilohertz so we have a mechanical vibration and uh, this uh, vibrations of course um, leads uh, to cracks after a uh, time as well so all together heat and time and mechanical um, yeah vibrations finally um, ends up to what uh, we see here and of course and that is what uh, we're going to check right now um, capacitors here definitely will have uh, developed a high SWR and uh, especially um, the capacitors down here which are responsible to start up uh, our um, our SMPS I don't think that here our filter caps on uh, the 380 volt uh, side and I don't think that here our filter caps on the secondary side of our SMPS will really have uh, a problem but all the little ones here which uh, are responsible in a way for getting the oscillation started and not only started also to keep up the um, oscillation that finally our SMPS can work and what we have here is uh, our original uh, schematic for our power supply and um, well so it is uh, a little bit confusing if you are not uh, used uh, to to read uh, those schematics uh, but what uh, we see we have uh, here uh, our coil and uh, that is here our uh, transistor for um, the flyback, flyback uh, converter and uh, you see that uh, we do not really have here um, a start or a standby uh, circuit which uh, will have a separate uh, voltage and a separate uh, oscillator which uh, will start the circuit so this here is a kind of um, yeah, it, it needs uh, to start up the oscillation by itself and uh, therefore um, here on uh, the base uh, side of uh, our flyback uh, transistor you see that uh, we have capacitors and uh, you see that uh, beside here uh, our primary uh, winding we have here uh, an additional winding which, which uh, is finally responsible after rectifying uh, here it is uh, responsible to um, bring here our um, pulse width modulation circuit um, in um, operation and uh, then uh, down here we have our feedback circuit to 
um, adjust uh, the pulse width uh, modulator and uh, of course all uh, the capacitors here are really needed to uh, get this um, uh, uh, SMPS working and if they are uh, worn out, dried and uh, whatever then um, this uh, startup um, process does not really work and uh, additional to that uh, if it starts sometimes it cannot hold the oscillation and therefore yes we have uh, to test the capacitors and I'm 100% certain that we find capacitors which are far off what uh, they should be and uh, I do not believe that here uh, our uh, filter capacitors are a problem but uh, all the capacitors here the C9, the C8, uh, the C13 and uh, all these uh, capacitors are yeah, predicted uh, to be um, a problem. So let's go and let's go down to the PCB and let's check it. Okay, and so we should have uh, all uh, in view here. And uh, let's start here with uh, all the little uh, capacitors down here. So C8, so that is one of uh, the most uh, suspected uh, one. So the um, C8 is uh, 500, uh, six, uh, it is uh, 56 microfarad, 50 uh, volt, and uh, yeah, well, 50 volt should be around 0 0.5 um, ohm. So let's see what uh, we really have, and we have two point. Yeah, let's see. And we have uh, two point, what was it? 2.2, .2, which uh, is far too high, far too high. So that uh, has to go. And uh, then maybe here, what is uh, the next one? Our C9, which is 220. 220, let me see where we have it uh, it is a little bit funny here again behind uh, the camera to identify the right uh, uh, have a look it is 53 and I said 220 micro and what have we uh, 16 uh, volt uh, so that should be around 0 0.3 volt um, ESR and it is 53 okay so that is definitely a reason why our uh, SMPS uh, won't start up and uh, if we go here uh, farther through here our circuit uh, we will identify that uh, we definitely have more than only this Bose but uh, I said and that is what uh, we do here in front of camera I said that most likely here our big filter caps are fine so we have uh, 470 micro and uh, 200 volt which uh, should be around uh, 0 0.3 around 0 0.3 ohm and let's see yeah 0 0.1 so that uh, says that they are fine 0 0.1 0 0.08 0 0.1 so you see that obviously yeah this uh, are fine and I said that most likely here our 1000 uh, what is it uh, 25 on uh, the secondary side um, will be not too bad as well so 1000 microfarad um, with 25 volt would or should show around 0 0.08 
So let's uh, see what we have. 0 0.1, so not too bad. And this one, 0 0.1. So um, I think we should uh, swap them, of course, but they are not too far away. And I bet when we test, when we, when we have um, the capacitors out and we test for capacity, I bet that uh, they are not far away. But uh, the other with a high SW, uh, with the high ESR, are definitely of um, the wanted uh, capacitance. So, okay, next step is we take uh, the uh, capacitors out to replace them, of course, and of course to uh, make or to show a complete picture. I, I wouldn't do that under normal uh, circumstances because I know they have to go, but uh, to show um, what the impact is, I will uh, run it uh, through my uh, capacitor analyzer to get a, cl a complete picture of uh, what's really going on here. Okay, and I've taken some out, not already old, but uh, yeah, very nice. But uh, to compare if uh, the re re results are um, different. Okay, so uh, the big one here is a filter cap after the bridge a rectifier, 470 microfarad, should be around 0 0.3. And we have 0 0.1, so that is definitely good. Our 1000, which uh, and uh, 25 volt, which should be around 0 0.08, is even better as uh, what we have tested in circuit. So that is definitely fine as well. That is our 2016, and uh, that should be around. Uh, 0 0.33 and here we have 165 and uh, that is definitely um, one of uh, the uh, of the cups which are responsible for not starting up so that uh, is uh, the uh, C what is it um, the C9 and uh, the C9 is uh, very important for the circuit to start up. Now we have here the 56 microfarad, which is 1.9 and should be around uh, 0 0.8, so that is too high but not too bad. And now we have here one uh, microfarad uh, capacitors, 50 uh, volt, 2.5 is not too bad, and the next one, and that is 98, and that is another one which uh, are producing trouble. Okay, now let's uh, test some, that's a capacitor analyzer, not all, but uh, here we have uh, our, let me see, that you can uh, see it. Where is it? So that is here our 16 volt uh, 220 microfarad. And uh, let's start uh, with uh, testing it. First, we test uh, for capacitor value. <laughs> and you see the first what we get is an arrow because it is so far off that, uh, that uh, the meter is not able to test it. Let's see if uh, it uh, would test the ESR and it is 280 ohms so that is uh, similar to what uh, we did uh, on the DERE uh, tester. So what is the leakage in uh, this case? It is 6 milliamps and it is dropping so it is still not good, but let's see if it's going down to microamps. So uh, regarding 
the leakage it uh, is not too bad it is not reporting good yet but um, well so that could take longer but anyways we are not able to test here for our microfarads and ESR so that is uh, um, a proof that uh, if we test such a bad um, ESR it uh, most of the time have an impact on uh, the capac capacitance as well so that is only the proof now let's see here our 1000 um, microfarad and let me put in here the figures 1000 microfarad and it is a 25 uh, volt uh, type now let's uh, connect it to the tester and let's see what uh, we get here and I said that most likely this is not too bad so let's see if we can get it confirmed value 1018 which is reported as good as you can see now uh, the ESR is uh, almost unreadable which uh, means it is very very small so obviously no problem here definitely no problem capacitor leakage let's have a look what that is uh, telling I mean of co okay um, it is uh, too high for the moment in time but it is dropping and uh, if I hold it long enough I would expect that uh, it is shown up a good result so that is now like um, a little bit uh, of reforming the capacitor so you may know that uh, electrolytics can get reformed and uh, that of course if uh, I put here the allowed um, voltage to the capacitor um, it will at the same time um, reform uh, the capacitor but of course it needs to go lower and uh, now we do not have the time now to wait it is quite um, already a long time that uh, we do not have here a result but uh, anyways what uh, we uh, can say is that uh, this capacitor at the end is uh, not too bad let me double check if uh, I have here yeah the values are in so therefore we already get here the good for the capacitance and let us uh, do this one here at uh, the capacitor analyzer as well so that is our big uh, filter cup 470 microfarad and uh, 200 uh, volt so whoops yeah that was not very good okay once again I put it down here so that is uh, definitely easier and now let's uh, check it capacitor value 475 which is good no problem let's uh, test the ESR which is uh, zero point it is almost zero and uh, that is uh, no problem as you can see let's test for capacitor leakage with uh, 200 uh, volt of course and it is a big electrolyt electrolytic uh, capacitor and uh, you can see it is dropping and dropping and uh, again it uh, would uh, take time so that is by the way the reason why uh, capacitors one of the reasons why capacitors are um, really need uh, to get uh, under voltage from time to time so um, you may have already heard that uh, you always should switch uh, on um, an electronic device in a while uh, to get 
the capacitors reformed because that is uh, what is happening and you see that uh, the leakage uh, current is dropping and dropping and that exactly uh, happens as well when you switch on your device then uh, you reform your capacitors right so therefore it is really important to do so that will definitely extend the life of uh, any capacitor anyways what uh, we uh, can see here is that uh, our big uh, filter capacitor here is uh, fine as well and uh, therefore you already got an feeling that uh, ESR and uh, of course our uh, capacitance and the other uh, values are most likely okay if the ESR is okay. So therefore very good uh, reference so that it's a cross reference that uh, it really works. Now we can go ahead and we replace the capacitors with uh, the knowledge uh, that they really need to get replaced. Okay, and I have here now our new capacitors, all are 105 volt types, and uh, we can assemble the board, and then we have, of course, uh, do uh, the sol solder points uh, new, and then hopefully our power supply will work again. Now all new capacitors are in and um, important uh, as well so the board is uh, completely reworked as you can see looks uh, pretty nice almost new and now we can test if uh, it works okay everything is uh, back together and uh, now we have here the moment of truth so um, our uh, mains is set to uh, 227 and let's try to fire it up. Wow, and here we are. So it is back working. So that means uh, we uh, really have, have here now a successful repair. And um, yeah, let me bring uh, the module back into the radio and uh, yeah, we really need uh, to get it back to the front panel as uh, the heatsink uh, which we have here is uh, now not sufficient. So let me switch it back out. Let me bring it back into the radio and uh, then we are almost ready. And of course a short final uh, check if uh, everything is more or less fine and uh, yeah you can hear it already so we are able to receive so that is very good and what we can see as well so we have a nice and clean uh, signal at uh, 37.6 uh, db uh, synet so that is uh, just fine so the radio transmits with uh, yeah, 18 19 uh, watt output power so that is fine as well and uh, therefore yeah that's it uh, for the moment uh, so looks like that uh, everything is uh, good and radio can go back okay so that means we can stop uh, the video here job done Su successful uh, outcome and uh, that means, see you next time. Bye.